Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, the uh, long COVID insomnia has me up at 2 a.m. today. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> so I've got my uh, smart telescope out. You can probably just see it down here in the corner, my, vi my computer or my uh, tablet, taking a picture of Andromeda. Uh, but I thought I would uh, share with you a little um, measurement I'm going to do with the Nano VNA. So this is an EMI filter that you can purchase off Amazon. This is a 20 amp version for about $16. They also have a 4 amp version that I picked up for about $11. Now you could build your own EMI filter, but at this price, $16, um, you'd have that much in parts, at least if you purchased all the parts separately. Uh, this is a DC EMI filter. I'm going to be using it in line uh, with the power feed to my radios and things here on the bench. But the 4 amp version I'm going to use in line with a power supply that I'm building for my Sunlu filament dryer for my 3D printing. Uh, I'm, you know, as you, most of you know, I live in an RV and I'm parked on a friend's property plugged into AC power, but I still try to use my solar as much as possible since I'm paying for the commercial electricity. I like to cut down the, uh, the uh, fee there as much as I can. Uh, so, uh, I'm building this power supply for the Sunlu. And I have this DC to DC converter. The uh, filament dryer requires 24 volts DC. My system is 12 volts. So this is an uh, input of 12 volts, output of 24 volts at 128 watts. The Sunlu draws uh, 48 watts, so this will work. But these little DC to DC converters generate a lot of noise. Uh, they, they generate a lot of hash noise. And I don't want that noise going back on the power rail into my system, and getting into my radios and radiating off the wires. So I've got this EMI filter that I'm going to put in line. But how good are these? Uh, what, are they, you know, what do they look like when you, when you run RF through them, RF noise? Well, we're going to use the Nano VNA to find out. I'm going to run a signal through here, and we're going to see how much this attenuates the signals. Let's go to the bench. These are the two filter boards. This is the 4 amp. This is the 20 amp. This is the input side. This is the output side. The ground, if you look at the electrolytics and figure out the ground, the uh, negative is on the short side closer to the edge of the board. So this is the negative side, this would be the positive side. So the first thing I want to check is through resistance. I want to see how much um, resistive loss we might have in these filters. So I've got the Fluke, good old 77AN. Okay, 0.4 ohms is what it's going it, to... It doesn't have a calibrate. This is a range button. But it looks like it's reading 0.3 to 0.4 ohms with the lead, so we'll add that to whatever we read through the filters. So let's see. 0.5, so about one-tenth of an ohm. Yeah. And on the ground side, slightly more. 0.6. Well, 0.5. Okay, so, you know, somewhere about a tenth of an ohm through. Let's check the uh, 20 amp version. Again, 0.5, so we're getting about a tenth of an ohm. Yep. Yep, about the same. Okay, so, yeah, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Yeah, so we're getting about a tenth of an ohm uh, through there. That's not too bad, so we're not going to have much loss. Now, what I want to see is frequency. So I'm going to bring in... the CC Nano VNA... And we're going to make some frequency measurements. Of course, first I have to calibrate it. I'll be zooming in on it here shortly. I just need to get set up. Okay, what we're going to use? Let's uh, let me zoom in here, and we'll get this. We'll get this set up. Uh, 
Okay. We're going to be doing a sweep of HF through about 1 megahertz through 60 megahertz. So the first thing I'm going to do is set up the stimulus. Start frequency, 1 megahertz. Stop frequency, 60 megahertz. Then we'll set up the display. Oh, actually, on the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go sweep points. By default, it's 101. I'm going to set it to 300 so we have better resolution. All right. And then we're going to set up the display. Uh, we're going to use one trace. And for the format, I'm going to use log mag, which stands for logarithmic magnitude. That means that we're measuring the magnitude of the signal in the vertical direction using a logarithmic scale, decibels. And I want to use... And um, my mode is going to be S21 through. But now we need to calibrate. To make these measurements off this board, I'm going to be using these oscilloscope uh, clip leads. And so I'm going to calibrate out to the ends of these leads. And in order to calibrate for load, I don't have a decade box, but I have this little guy that I built. This is a 10 turn precision uh, potentiometer. And we've got, we got the fluke right here. Let's see, I should have it set to 50 ohms. 49.8. See if I can touch it a bit. Well, how about that? 50 ohms. So that'll be my load. So let's go into calibrate. And calibrate. Okay. First thing we're going to measure, let me get the lead straight here. So this is the uh, port one lead. It's open. So I'll measure open. And then we'll short it, connect it to itself, measure short. And then for load, I will hook it up to my 50 ohm load. And then of course the last calibration is short, or I mean through. So I'll take and hook it up to the probe leads from the S2 or the two S2 port, and we'll calibrate through. Done, and I'll save it to slot six. So there we go. Now we're calibrated, and you can now if I zoom back in with the leads connected to each other, we're seeing uh, 0 0.00 dB. Flat line straight across, so we are calibrated. All right, I'm gonna hook it up to one of the filters. Okay, we are now connected through the filter. I can bring this in and zoom in for you, and it looks like we've definitely got some attenuation. So this is one to 60 megahertz. And up here at 60 megahertz, we have negative 22.25 dB. So that's pretty good attenuation up there at 60. So this is, that's, that's good. But look at this down here. We're getting much better attenuation down here. Let me bring the uh, marker down. Let's get to 30 megahertz. There's 34 megahertz. We've got negative 41.22 dB. That's really good. There's 30. And we're at negative 38 dB attenuation. So now we're getting down into HF, and it's getting better and better as we go down in frequency. There's 21 megahertz around the 15 meter band, notorious band for interference. And we're seeing negative 41.92 dB of attenuation through the filter. Pretty good. And it gets better the lower we go. 
Let's get down here to where 80 meters is. There we are, 3.565 megahertz, negative 69 dB. So you can see this filter is working really well um, for the HF spectrum, which is what I'm interested in it for. I think it's going to provide good attenuation. Let's compare the, uh, let's see if we got something similar on the uh, 20 amp version. So I'm going to disconnect the 4 amp. All right, there we go. We're on the filter. And a very similar curve. There we go. So again, at 3.5 megahertz, now we're seeing negative 67, 68, uh, 67, it's 66.91. Um, so yeah, let's call it negative 67 dB at the bottom of 80 meters, and it's a, a real similar curve. We still got that little bump here, but it looks like uh, performance is uh, going to be almost identical. Let's move the marker up. Let's get up to around 15 meters again. Oops. Negative 49 dB. So good attenuation there as well. And uh, 30 megahertz, top of the uh, HF spectrum, negative 42 dB. And all the way up at 60, we're seeing negative 21.95, so we'll call it negative 22 uh, dB of attenuation on the 20 amp version of the filter. So if you're interested in these HF filters, or these EMI filters, the 20 amp version was like 16 bucks. And the uh, four amp version was eleven bucks. Uh, yeah, you can't build them for that. Um, I think that's a good deal. I'm gonna go ahead and use one of these uh, in my power supply, and hopefully I won't get much noise uh, back from the unit in the uh, power supply. I might do a follow up video and let you know how the uh, actual real world performance is, but I will provide an Amazon link uh, in the description to these filter boards. It's not an affiliate link. I don't make any money off it. I just found them and I think that they're going to be useful and I thought I would share. So there you go. This is actually quite an effective filter. I would put a, a schematic together for this thing, but I don't have the core values uh, and types and inductance on these inductors. And honestly, um, at this price point, why build your own? These things are pretty cheap and as we saw from the Nano VNA, quite effective. So I think this is going to work out great for my power supply for keeping the noise from the filament dryer and from this DC to DC converter from getting back into my radios or radiating off the wire, power wire, and uh, causing the interference. It looks like it's pretty well built, and uh, I think it's going to work quite well for my application. So there's another use for the Nano VNA. Uh, it's a really wonderful tool, that little CC Nano VNA. I also reviewed that in another video, which I'll link in the description below, if you're in, more interested in that VNA. So uh, there you go. I hope you found that interesting, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.